Hello everyone! In this tutorial we explain how to create a MicroROS2 Arduino IDE interface and how to run a MicroROS2 on an ESP32 microcontroller board. This tutorial is based on the MicroROS2 for Arduino library and the ROS2 Humble distribution. In particular, this tutorial is based on the ESP32 S3 DevKit C board shown over here. However, with small modifications, everything explained in this tutorial can be used to develop a MicroROS2 Arduino interface for other ESP32 supported boards, as well as for other supported boards, not necessarily ESP32 boards. The library and the list of the supported boards are given over here. Here is the list of all the boards. In my previous tutorial, I explained how to create a MicroROS2 Arduino interface for TNC boards. In this tutorial, I will explain how to do the same thing for the ESP32 board. However, you also have other boards over here, as well as community-supported boards that are shown over here. ESP32 microcontroller boards are very popular in robotics and IoT communities. The board I'm using has both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connections, and in addition to that, it has 8 MB of flash memory, 512 KB of SRAM, and a large number of programmable GPIO ports. Also, this board is more powerful than most of the Arduino boards. In addition, this board can also run MicroROS2. This information is very important for robotics and mechatronics engineers using ro Robot Operating System version 2 or ROS2. To complete the idea of this video is to teach you how to run a publisher node in Arduino and how to use MicroROS agent and ROS2 Humble to receive a message from the Arduino node and display them on the computer screen. This can be seen as a Hello World program of computer Arduino interface. In particular, in this video tutorial, we explain number one, how to install Arduino IDE in Linux from scratch. Then, we explain how to install an ESP32 board in Arduino IDE and how to run a Hello World example. Then, we explain how to install MicroROS for Arduino library. Then, we explain how to load the publisher example in Arduino ESP32. And finally, we explain how to run a MicroROS2 agent in ROS2 Humble that will display the messages sent from Arduino publisher on the computer screen. This image illustrates a communication structure that we will develop in this tutorial. A micro ROS2 agent is running on a personal computer in ROS2 Humble. On the other side, we have a micro ROS2 publisher node running on an ESP32 microcontroller. Messages from the publisher are sent through the topic called micro ROS Arduino node publisher to a micro ROS agent running on a personal computer. The messages are simple integer values that are continuously increased. And finally, we will display the messages on the computer screen. As a demonstration of what you will learn in this tutorial, over here you can see an Arduino implementation of a micro ROS2 publisher node. As mentioned previously, this code will send an integer to appropriate topic to our local computer. Over here, we have a micro ROS2 agent running on my personal computer in Linux Ubuntu. And over here, you can see the transmitted data. You can easily generalize this example and make it more applicable to a wide variety of robotic systems. In this tutorial, in the interest of brevity, we just demonstrate the basic proof of principle. Before we start with explanations, we have to mention several important things. First of all, due to the complexity of this topic and due to the complexity of this tutorial, you have to carefully follow and understand every step we are performing. Otherwise, you will not be able to successfully run ROS2 nodes on Arduino or on the local computer. Also, we are using Ubuntu 22.04 and ROS2 Humble. However, everything explained in this tutorial can be generalized to other distributions of ROS2. 
We have also created a detailed manual that is currently presented and that thoroughly explains all the steps and Linux commands that we are executing. A link to this manual is provided in the description below this tutorial as well as in the comment section. Okay, let's start. First, we will explain how to install Arduino IDE in Linux from scratch. For those of you who don't know, IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. First of all, let's open a terminal. Then, we need to make sure that PySerial is installed. It's necessary to install PySerial before installing anything else. To install PySerial, you need to execute this command. Okay, as you can see over here, PySerial is is installed in my case, however in your case you might see the installation progress. Good, let's continue. The next step is to download the Arduino. To do that you need to go to this link, here it is, and over here you need to select the newest version of Linux, that is you need to select this app image or application image. So click over here, I will click just on download and I will click on just download and you can see the install actually the download progress over here okay so let's see where is our file our file is usually in the downloads folder and here it is good let's continue these three numbers over here are the version number however if you're watching this tutorial after April 2024 these numbers might be different Consequently, you need to change the numbers in the commands that I'm typing. That is, don't blindly copy and paste or simply type the commands I'm typing. It's very important to adjust this number. Okay, so let's continue. The next step is to create the installation folder. To do that, you need to go to the home folder we can navigate to home folder by typing cd and tilde, where tilde is the shortcut for the home folder. And in this home folder, we will create the folder called Arduino. Okay, then we need to copy the downloaded file from the download directory to the newly created directory. To do that, we need to execute this command. Here, the command is cp standing for copy, this is the origin path and the name of the file, and this is the destination path. Okay, let's now verify that the file is properly copied. We can do it like this. We can go to our Arduino folder, and over here you can see that we have copied the file. Good. Next, we need to execute these two commands. Here you need to enter the password and you need to press the enter. Then after that, we need to execute this command. These two commands will install Fuse such that we can run the file without any problems. Now, to be able to execute a file, we need to add the executable permissions to that file. Let's see what, is, what are the executable permissions. We can see that we can actually read and write this file, however, we cannot execute. To add the executable permission to this file, we need to execute this command. That is, we need to add here plus x. And let's now verify. And you can see over here that we have X. X means that we can execute this file. Next, attach the ESP32 board to the computer. We need to set the permissions to the USB port such that we can upload the code from Arduino IDE. First, we need to make sure that the ESP board is attached to the USB port of the computer. We are using the UART port of the ESP32. To show you what is a UART port, if I go all the way up, 
I'm actually using this UART port and my micro USB is connected to this port and the other end of the micro USB port is attached to my computer. Okay, so let's continue. To make sure that our computer can properly recognize the ESP32 microcontroller board and to make sure that UART controller can be recognized by our system, we need to execute this command. This command will list all the USB devices. And over here, you should see this line. This is actually a driver for the UART controller. And if you see this line, this means that your computer can recognize the ESP32 microcontroller board. Let's continue. For the computer and Arduino IDE point of view, the USB ports are denoted either by TTY ACMX or TTY USB X, where X is a number. It can be 0, 1, 2, or 3. We need to find the name of the port. That is, we need to determine if our computer is denoting the board by TTY ACM or TTY USB. First of all, let's try with TTY ACM. To do that, execute this command. And over here, I don't see anything, and this means that TTY ACM is not the port name. On the other hand, if you see an output over here, this means that this board is recognized as TTY ACM port. Okay, let's try the second option. That is, let's try this. And as you can see over here, my board is actually recognized, or better to say, the USB port is TTY USB 0. Perfect. Next. Let's execute this command. Over here, I'm executing, executing sudo user mode dash a dat, dash g dial out and my username. My username is Alexander. Okay, now if you don't know your username, you need to type this who am I? And you can see your username. Next we need to make sure that we can properly send and receive data from our USB port. To do that, we need to set the proper permissions for our USB port. That is, we need to execute this command where we are adding plus read and write. Okay, finally, let's confirm the permissions. And you can see over here that we can read and write to our USB port, and that's very good, and we can continue. To start Arduino, first of all, we need to go to the Arduino folder. We can do it like this. And in the Arduino folder, we can run this file, and the file is actually given over here, by running this command over here. Let me close this and here's the command. And here is our Arduino. Perfect. Now every time you want to run Arduino you would need to open a terminal, go to the folder and you need to run that file. And for some users this might be difficult. It's a better idea to create a shortcut such that when we press over here and we type Arduino, we can start Arduino like this. In the sequel, I will teach you how to create this shortcut. Close the Arduino IDE and go back to the terminal. And in the terminal, you need to run these commands. This command will actually install gedit. Gedit is a very powerful and simple editor for editing code files. Then, you need to go to this folder and in this folder you need to create this file. And let's type the content of the file. Here it is. This will create a shortcut. The type is application here is the name, and here enter the correct version, and this is the most important line. This is the absolute path 
to the executable file. And over here, of course, you need to adjust your version. Save this file, close this file. Let's do a test. Now click over here, and if you type Arduino over here, you'll see a shortcut, and you can click on that shortcut to start Arduino IDE. Next, we need to install the ESP32 library in Arduino IDE. To do that, we need to go to this link, to this page, and over here, we need to copy this link. Click over here to copy. Then, go back to Arduino, click on File, Preferences, and over here, paste the link. And click on OK. However, we need to do several more, more adjustments. Next, click on Tools, then click on over here Board, click on Boards Manager, and over here search for ESP32. Don't click on the first part over here, click over here. This will install the official and supported version of ESP32 library for Arduino. Click on install and over here you need to be patient. This will take some time. This will download the package, compile the library and install it. The best way to test this installation is to try to run a Hello World example. Now, click on file, over here click on examples and you can still not see all the examples for our ESP32 board. To see the examples, first of all, you need to select the board. Click on Tools. Here, find the board. You can see ESP32 and find your board. In my case, it's ESP32 S3 Dev Module. Perfect. Next, click on Tools. Click on Port. And as you can see over here, our port is TTY USB 0 and that's precisely the information we obtained from our terminal. Okay, now click on File, click on Examples and voila! Over here you can see ESP32 examples. Find ESP32, then find GPIO and click over here. This will open a new Arduino window with a Hello World example. So what's happening over here? Over here in the main loop, we will actually blink the built-in LED. And first of all, we're going to turn it on off and then we will blink it sequentially and it will blink red, green and blue. That's it. You don't need to understand this code at this point. Okay, so let's verify the code. Okay, then make sure that the proper port and the boards are selected, perfect, and you can upload the code. Now here you have to be patient, and here it is. Okay, perfect. And now if you look at your board, the LED will blink first on, off, and then red, green, and blue. Now, here I have to mention one very important thing. What can happen while uploading the code? This is very important. You might see this uh, error, a fat fatal error occurred. Fail to connect to ESP32 S3, no serial data received. Well, the solution for this problem is to hold down the boot button and then press and release the reset button while still holding the boot button. This will initiate firmware download mode and you only need to do this once. That is, once you purchase your board, you need to first press boot button, hold the boot and then press and release the reset button, this will start the, the download mode. This is very important. Next, we explain how to install MicroROS for Arduino library. To do that, we need to go to this web page and over here we need to select our version of ROS. I'm using Humble, consequently I will click on Humble. Then click over here and download zip. Now, go to the Downloads folder and copy this library. We'll paste this library to our Arduino folder. So go on Home, click on Arduino and paste the library over here. 
Next, let's learn how to install this library in Arduino. To install this library, click on Sketch and click on Include a Library. And over here, click Add.zip Library. Now, go to the Arduino folder, it's in Home, Arduino, and click on the zip file and click on Open. And then you can see a message over here, successfully installed the library. Now, if you go back to the Arduino folder, you will see that the library is installed over here. Here it is. Actually, this is a pre-compiled library and you need, don't need to build the library in your system. Of course, there is an option that you manually build this library. However, for complete beginners, I recommend that you follow this approach. Next, let's learn how to run a MicroROS2 publisher node on our board. For that purpose, we will be using one of the built-in examples. To load the built-in example, click on File, then over here click Examples, then scroll all the way down and find MicroROS Arduino. Expand and over here click on MicroROS Publisher. And here is the script that implements the publisher node in MicroROS on our board. To make this tutorial as short as possible, I will only briefly go over this example. So what's happening over here? In our setup function, we are creating over here a node. The node name is MicroROS Arduino node. And over here, we are creating a publisher. We are specifying a topic name. The topic name is MicroROS Arduino Node Publisher. And this topic will be used to send messages from our node running on our board to our local computer. We can see that the messages are of int32 type. That is, we will be sending integers. Now, if you go over here, you can see the callback function. This callback function is actually called within certain time interval, that is every certain number of seconds, for example, two seconds or one second. And let's see what's happening over here. We can see that the message.data, that is our integer, is being increased. To summarize, this code will create the publisher, will create a topic, and it will send integers that are increased over time. That's, you, that's all you need to know for the time being. Of course, spend some time, read several tutorials avail available online and try to understand this code. The code is not complex. And of course, you can expand this code and make it more generalized. You can incorporate your sensors over here. You can incorporate maybe actuators, etc. Now, let's try to verify and upload this code. First of all, click on Tools and make sure that the proper board is selected and make sure that the proper port is being selected. Perfect. Now, click over here on Verify and let's see what will happen. The sketch is compiling and there is an error. Let's see the error. Here it is. Library MicroROS Arduino has, has been declared pre-compiled and you can see that you cannot find, that is Arduino cannot find this folder over here and the library. Aha! Uh -huh. Hmm. How to solve this problem? Well, here is a simple solution. Simply copy the name of this folder. Then click over here, go to Arduino folder, find the library, expand. Now go back to Arduino and follow this path. Go to Libraries, MicroROS Arduino, Source. Let's do that. Here it is, Library, MicroROS Arduino, Source. And you can see that there is a folder called ESP32. However, that folder is not ESP32S3. Aha! Uh -huh. So we can simply rename it. This is the trick. So let's rename the file, click on Enter, and that's it. So what is the issue over here? Well, MicroROS correctly recognized our board. However, you need to have a specific folder and inside of this folder, this file for every board type. 
This is very important. Consequently, if you're using some other board, for example, if you're using any of these boards over here, div modules, since div modules are supported, and room modules, you need to change the name of the folder such that the name of the folder matches this name over here. That is, this name over here, inside Arduino libraries microros Arduino source, should ma match the name of this folder. Good. Now let's try to verify. And as you can see over here, no issues. Okay, let's now upload the code. To upload the code, you can simply click over here and be patient. And you can see writing, writing, writing. This is very good. And that's it. Perfect. And finally, let's learn how to create and run a MicroROS agent in ROS2 Humble that will display the messages sent from Arduino Publisher on the computer screen. For that purpose, let's open a new terminal. And as always, the first step, whenever you want to create a package or a node in ROS is to source the environment. Next, we need to create the workspace folder. To create the workspace folder, first of all, we need to go back to the home directory. Then inside of the home directory, we need to create our workspace folder. And let's navigate to the workspace folder. OK. Now, we need to clone over here this GitHub repository. Let's explain this command. First of all, this is not a command consisting of double lines. That is, this is actually not a new line. It is just being represented like this. Consequently, I will first copy and paste this part. Then, in the same actually row, we need to create space over here. And then you need to specify the link. Okay, let's expand, let's explain this command. First of all, here we are cloning. Over here we are selecting the branch and the branch should correspond to our current ROS distribution. In my case, this dollar ROS distro is actually humble. If you now go back to the page that is over here, over here you need to select the branch and the branch should be humble. Okay, go back over here and let's press enter. This will clone the remote repository and you can see the progress over here. Let's see the repository. Here it is. Here is our source folder. Everything is inside of the source folder. Next, we need to install ROSDEP. Okay, next we need to run update. And here you need to be patient. Here again, be patient. And finally, we need to run this command. Okay, next you need to install pip. All the most likely pip is installed, or pipe, however you like to pronounce it, in on your system. As you can see over here, pip or pipe is installed. Next, we need to build. Here, to build the workspace, it's very important to be in this folder. In this folder, you need to execute this command. And here you need to be patient. Actually, this took less than a second. Next, we need to source the created packages. After we build something, we need to source the packages. We do it like this. Okay. The next step is to create and build the MicroROS2 agent. First of all, we need to run this two, these two ROS2 commands. First of all, this one. Okay, and after that, we need to run this command. And this will take some time.
Here you need to be patient. You can see the build process over here in the progress. This will take some time and good. Next, we need to perform one final sourcing of the created packages. Good. And finally, we can run the ROS2, micro ROS2 agent program. Let's see how to do that. We run it like this. ROS2 run, micro ROS agent, micro ROS agent, and over here we need to specify the serial port. And as you can see over here, this is the USB port to which our board is attached. And press enter. Aha! Uh -huh. Let's analyze what's happening over here. Nothing interesting. Nothing interesting. Okay, now, look what will happen once I press the reset button on my board. To show you where the reset button is, if you go back to the picture or the figure of the board, the reset button is given over here. Now, I will press the reset button and observe what will happen over here. Okay? Uh -huh. After I press the reset button, you can see something interesting happened. Topic created, publisher created, data writer created. That is, after you run the micro ROS2 agent, you need to reset your board. And after you reset the board, everything will be created and all the topics and publishers will be recognized. Okay, now let's learn how to print the messages. Open a new terminal and again, the first step is to source our environment. Okay, let's see the list of all the available topics. We can do it like this. Aha, uh -huh, we can see the pot topics. Ross out, parameter events, and here is our topic. Hmm, interesting. And that's precisely the topic specified in our setup function and specified over here. Micro ROS Arduino Node Publisher. Micro ROS Arduino Node Publisher. And this topic is used to communicate the messages. Good. Next, let's see the list of nodes. Here is the list of nodes. We only have a single node, and if we go back to Arduino code, you can see that the node is created over here, and here is the name of the node that perfectly matches this name. Perfect. Let's continue. Let's now learn how to listen the messages being sent through this topic and how to display the messages on the, on the computer screen. For that purpose, we need to use this command, ROS2 topic echo, and we simply specify the name of the topic. This command will actually receive the messages from the topic and it will display the messages on the computer screen. And here they are. Here are the integers that are being increased incrementally. Again, if you go back to Arduino code, you need to find this timer callback function that's being called by the publisher and you can see that our integer values are being increased over here. Now, let's see what will happen if I press the reset button on my board. Aha! We can see that the complete procedure is started from scratch. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video and have a nice day.